everybody. Welcome back to my channel. This is Kathy at Attic Treasures Etc. And today is Scrap Busting Saturday. So over the past week, I made this cute little journal out of a couple of envelopes and, um, and just a bunch of scraps that I had laying around. There's a, a pocket in the top of each cover and I've covered it with some uh, fuzzy cuts that I've had laying around also the uh, the master board that I made uh, have some clusters in here just some stickers some different types of paper so what I'd like to do today for scrap busting Saturday is to make another one very similar to this so a while back I found a bunch of envelopes like this and they're pretty long um, and they're not really a good size necessarily for, I mean, I guess they could be like a traveler's journal or something like that. But what I decided to do is to cut them down to make the cover. And I have this, I have some more of this master board that I made just from uh, the leftover uh, pieces from the boxes, bags, and book pages series that I did. I had a couple of pieces left this size. So I took two of the envelopes because it was it's more than just cutting it in half to uh, form the front and back covers for these. So what I would like to do is show you how I put this together. So since I cut it down, then the top of the front cover and the top of the back cover will also be pockets. So to make this spine, what I did was I used my scoreboard. I'm going to pull this up so you can see it maybe a little bit better. I used my scoreboard to score one quarter inch away from where the fold, the natural fold is for the envelope. And when I put it together, then this, that will form the spine for the signature. Before I put the the pieces together what I want to do is cut a thumb hole like I did on this one right here but I need to find the center not the center of this piece because that's going to be glued down but the center from the spine to the edge so I'm gonna put it on here and there's one two three four five so we'll go right there and mark it. And I'm going to do that on both sides because the top of each one is going to be a pocket. It's just easier to do this before it's glued down. So I'm just using my circle punch. Could go down a little bit further. Okay. So now that'll be roughly in the center. So now I'm going to insert one flap into the other envelope, kind of line up the spine, and then I'm going to glue that down with some art glitter glue. And then glue it so that the spines are together and I'm going to give it a little bit more and actually this whole thing is going to be glued down this flap so I'll just go ahead and put glue on it I'm going to glue down the edge of uh, both of these as well both of these sides the pocket will basically just be this part of it if that makes sense it'll still hold a nice tag Before I do the rest of the cover, I would like to ink it up. And I so I'm going to start with the fired brick. And then to vintage it up a little bit more and distress it a little bit more, I'm just going to put some vintage photo on the, on the very edges. And because it's going to be easier to do the inking on the inside before I get all the outside done, I'm just going to go ahead and do that now as well. Okay, so definitely want to make sure I have the right side up. 
so I can put the, um, oh, actually let's do this fine too. <laughs> All right, as I was saying, I just definitely want to make sure that I have the right uh, side up so that when I put the little covers on, or the master boards. So this is going to be the front. And I'm going to put this one on here like so. So we'll use the art glitter glue. And I made these master boards on paper bags. So if you've got grocery bags, although <laughs> I think those are going to get kind of scarce now here in Washington because there's a statewide ban on single use uh, plastic bags now. And the paper bags are going to be eight cents a piece. We always bring our cloth bags with us, but sometimes we forget. And sometimes I want some paper bags. <laughs> so I have a little bit of a collection now, so I guess I better not throw any away because I use them quite a bit on my craft. There we go. And the other one is going to go on this side. Okay, so that's all done. Now it's time to put the put the embellishments on. Get some leaves on here since it's fall. I'm going to use Fabri-Tac for this. So I got these leaves at the Dollar Tree. They had so many cute things for fall, and, um, like these leaves, and they also had uh, some napkins and other you know things that you can use in your craft for fall and I I really love the colors of fall so much so I was pretty excited to see them and then I have this little sunflower this came from there too I'm gonna cut off his little stem And then I also used my Dymo labeler that my husband found for me at a garage sale, or excuse me, at the thrift store. I just typed out the words or punched out or whatever you want to call it for Hello Fall. And it's pretty sticky, but I'm going to use some glue anyway. On our walk um, up to Barnum Point, it's a perfect trail for us, but... Um, Anyway, a lot of the trees in the forest have lost their leaves now. And what's really interesting about that is that you can see more of the forest as a result. You can see a lot of the, the tree trunks and, and things like that that you couldn't see before because there was so much brush in the way. And uh, it, just, it just looks really cool. <laughs> okay. And I also have this little, this little ground squirrel. He's so cute. And this is a fussy cut uh, from a book. And a friend of mine gave me a bunch of cardboard like that, that you find like in pillowcases, pillowcase um, packages and things like that. And so she gave me a bunch and a subby suggested that I take the fussy cuts and glue them to the cardboard. And I thought, well, that's a really good idea. And the funny thing was, is that I had just suggested almost that exact same thing uh, that same day to another subby who wanted to uh, put some, a fussy cut, a paper fussy cut on top of fabric. And so I suggested, well, glue it onto cardboard first. <laughs> it was so funny. We had the same idea on the same day. Well, I feel like I should have just been doing this all along. And it kind of gives it a more of a Tim Holtz feel to it, I guess. I also, I use Mod Podge to, um, to attach it to the cardboard. And then I put some um, collage medium on top. So I'm really liking that. And then I have these little mushrooms and it's just a sticker. And I don't wanna put it off to the side because this has a bit of a thickness now. So I'm just gonna put it on top. And these stickers are kind of a pain to get the backing off of. So I'm gonna turn the camera off while I do this because sometimes it takes me a couple of minutes to get it off. Okay, there it came off. Sometimes if you can get the blade just perfectly between the backing and the sticker, 
it'll come off, but that's the tricky part. Okay, so that is the front. I really like that. And now for the back, I want to um, decoupage on a couple of things. So we'll start with this. I'm going to use Mod Podge for this, for uh, the underneath. And the reason I do that is because I really like the the texture of the Distress Collage Medium on the top, but it's a little bit more expensive, so I only use it for the top for projects like this, the top coat to seal it. And now I'm going to use the Distress Collage Medium in matte for the top. So I'm going to dry this off camera and I'll be right back. Okay, now that this is nice and dry, I'm going to go ahead and continue on with my collage project. I have some mushrooms right here. I went ahead and took off the, <laughs> the backing and this butterfly from a field guide. And then this gorgeous woodpecker that I also, I got it out of a book, but I also uh, put it onto cardboard to back it so that it's a little bit more sturdy. All right, there's the front and back cover done. Now for the inside. So I have this book page from a vintage children's book. Um, I will go ahead and cut some of this off. Okay, that one goes there. I have a, a dictionary page that's also quite vintage. Just ink the edges up a little bit. So I'm going to use Mod Podge for this. And again, I'm going to use Mod Podge to glue it down and then the Distress Collage Medium to seal it. You're probably wondering why I didn't do this part before I did all the stuff on the front. And you know what? I'm wondering the same thing. <laughs> oh well. So before I let this dry, I'm going to decoupage on some of this napkin that I got at the Dollar Tree. making sure it's all stuck down. And I'm going to put uh, leaves on the other side as well. All right, now I'm gonna put the top coat on and then I'm gonna turn the camera off and just let it dry. All right, we're all dry now. I added uh, some fussy cuts that have been hanging around in my stash for a while. And over on this side, um, I added some of this Gilder's Paste Wax because even though it has some wrinkles in it from when it was decoupaged on, I like to embrace the wrinkles. So I like to just go over them lightly with some of the Gilder's Paste Wax and just sort of enhance those wrinkles. And it gives it kind of a nice little sheen. I like that look. Okay. So now I have the signature actually all together. Um, what I've done is when, well, when I was making the uh, boxes, bags, and book pages, I had to cut the pages down in the vertical direction because they were just too long for the, the signature cover. So I had a whole bunch of these little pieces left and I thought it would be fun to go ahead and include them in this journal. But it's going to be a lot easier for me to work with this if it's already sewn in. And normally I don't do that until the very end. But I'm making an exception with this, and you'll see why. So in the center here, I have a doily that I've decoupaged on. And I've already added some tabs. But I've got a lot of other little things in here. Little, you know, I, I made a cluster. I've got some some of the extra decoupage, some more of the master board, and some fabric and stuff like that. So I thought we could just go ahead and I'll sew this in and then come back 
and work on some of these other pages with just some uh, some embellishing. So I'll be right back. Alrighty, so now I have the signature all sewn in. And the reason I did that is because of all these little pages here. It just makes it a lot easier. So we've got some of these little half pages and the little flip pages. Uh, something, a page out of a children's encyclopedia. A dictionary page, a music sheet, just a random paper, some more of those, and then um, the doily in the center. Okay, so why don't we go ahead and get started. I have some things sort of already picked out. So on this page, this is just some music paper that I had stamped on. I'm going to be fairly quick about this if I can. My phone... Um, it's an older phone and it doesn't hold a charge like it used to when it was young, sort of like me, <laughs> like all of us. And I think it's fun to watch these pages just sort of come to life. When I say music paper, what I mean is piano roll. So this came from a piano roll from the journal that I'm working on. And this was, <laughs> this was from a wedding invitation, actually. So there, that page is ready. And I hope you'll stick with me to the end because there's a surprise at the end. Why don't I put that right there? This is a fussy cut from a, from a magazine. A lot of this stuff has just been, you know, I spend some time fussy cutting and then it sticks around in my stash for a long time. So these scrap busting projects are really good for me to, to use some of that stuff up. So for these guys, you can, um, you can absolutely use glue stick to attach some of these uh, collage papers. So when I'm doing a, a scrap project like this, I just grab my glue stick and go to town. And of course, not every uh, page has to have something on it. Sometimes you just need a little butterfly or even just some washi tape. And these are just laying around not doing anything. Why not give them a home? So this, little, this dictionary page is quite old. So what I did is I reinforced the, the fold and the edges with some washi tape just to give it a little bit extra strength. This piece is left over from cutting the masterboard to fit the cover. 
and it fits perfectly right there as though it were made for that but it wasn't but we can pretend it was so this is just a little cluster of scraps that I put together and the leaf is from that same wedding invitation so I think I'd like to put a few tabs on some of them I sewed on but I'm not going to be able to do that now I mean I, I suppose I could but it would be super awkward so thank you for joining me during this I am going to go ahead and do a flip through of both of these and I'm going to do it silently so enjoy the music first I'll start with autumn breeze and then I'll go and start with hello fall Now I'll do Hello Fall, and you'll notice that I did a little bit more embellishing with this offline. So if you stayed with me through the end of this video, I just want you to know how much I appreciate you. What I would like to do is to give both of these journals away to two wonderful subscribers. All you have to do to win one of these is to um, put a note in the comments saying that you are a subscriber and tell me which journal you would like to win, either Autumn Breeze or Hello Fall. So I would love to give these away to you as, an, as a token of my appreciation. So thank you so much for joining me. Um, give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and then get in on the, the little um, giveaway contest. So as always, let the serendipity find you and happy crafting. Thank you so much, everybody. Have a great, wonderful crafting day and I'll see you in my next video. And by the way, I will post the, uh, the winner to the video next Wednesday and I'm not sure what day that is but I'll put a I'll put a little note in there okay everybody have a great day bye bye